or if it stops fucking up all the time. All the time they mess with my mind. Um, I guess we can fix this graph. That's what we can do. Um, what else? What else can I do? That's a good question. Um, I don't think the data is quite right here. Um, so maybe I should go about it a more uh, easy way or something like print out all the data or something okay so this runs through the array so I guess we can just print it here or something function Start from zero, zero based, and this one. still needs one, doesn't it? As we don't have sixty four, where did sixty four go?
There's a build, hexagram difference. We have. Okay, so why does this stop before? Um. So I guess I can try to print this list and let's see what that holds. Uh, it seems like there's a bit too much going on here, almost. Okay, so 94, 94 is this one. Map iterator it goes to 63 or 63, so it's definitely definitely holds the value. Uh, I guess one thing we can try to do is control out the K, or maybe the value is easier to see. Um, I also need to remove some of these prints. Ninety-nine. Where is that? Imagination oh, is it? Is more important than Here we have it. Forty-one. That's K. That's the. Okay, so that's the binary value. Maybe we should do V. Um, and see. Okay, so sixty-four. It most certainly prints sixty-four. Um, okay, and it prints two as well. We don't print one, so maybe maybe this is where the mistake happens. Um, so two, three. Okay, so one. We store one in the temp variable, um, and then we wait. But where is the mistake then? Where is the mistake? So the mistake seems to be that it doesn't calculate the last one, but why doesn't it calculate the last one? Why doesn't it calculate the last one? It definitely prints it. Why doesn't this go up? Const value of V? Um, why 
okay, it's just not working. So, what is the difference here? It's exactly opposite, right? <laughs> yes, all the bits are opposite, so what kind of comparison is done? Maybe that's where the mistake happens here. The comparison for 64 is compared with with one yeah that might be it 64 is compared with one i think so 64 is compared with one meaning meaning what can we do meaning we Okay, so um, dun, dun. we have. We need to compare the last one. How do we do that? Meaning that when there's no more in the list or something. So, uh, JavaScript map. Maybe I can look at. So, iterable. How can we do something with this? Values, entries, entries, iterator. Okay, so this returns an iterator, which holds a next, which holds a value. So, I can do this the most optimal way. Result that done. Okay, so it's not done. I guess I can do this maybe. It dot next. Dot next. Maybe we should try. So we have the iterator, which is this one. And we have a result, which is what we look for. The next dot value give us the value. We start by doing this, um, and then maybe I should do a check here. Then again, I could probably also do this down here, right? But I, I just don't have a value if this is done. Or maybe I do. Because it's not this kind of for each, right? I mean, this it's probably the same. This is just another structure. But I'm not sure what is being passed along. Um, 
I guess I could just do it this way and then we say if result is done uh, then we have to do something more specific I suppose so We can remove this now, I guess, if we take this and we place it up here, right? Or is this wrong? Should it be before or after this? Hmm, that's a good question. And we probably also still need this temp variable, right? So, if... Salt has a value meaning that it is the value, or can we get the keys? Result, the key maybe. Um, while custom iterators are useful too are a useful tool that a creation requires a careful programming requires careful programming due to the need to explicitly maintain their internal state generator functions provide a powerful alternative they allow you to define an iterative algorithm by writing a single function whose execution is not continuous Generator functions are written using the function star syntax. When called initially, generator functions do not execute any of their code, instead, a retur instead returning a type of iterator called the generator. When a value is consumed by calling the generator's next method, the generator function execute until it encounters the yield keyword. Interesting, maybe I should use this. But it's already an iterator, right? So I guess it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter so much. Um, so let me see. That's fine. If it's done, then we do that. Else, hex, solve, key. I guess this is what we call k, right? Um, let's see what this does, actually. We remove this. Ok, 
Okay. So you're not working anymore. Let me see what happened. Push A. We still have A. We have an iterator. So I guess the only way, the only way to look at this is debug it. So let's see. Result done. False. Oh yeah, that's good. Result value. Mm-hmm. Result key is undefined. Okay. So value. Okay, value holds an array. So that's the problem. We have value which holds an array and what we need is the first value of the array. So let's get this. And let's get it here and we'll get it like this and this and that. Good. Good to do. <laughs> right, who cares? Fuck it. Value zero array array. Why? Why would this not return? Hmm. Interesting. So, when does it fail? Okay, it seems to fail on the last one, right? cannot read zero of undefined, it's probably because of this and we maybe have to uh, continue here or something it's cold, it's cold, yeah, script, district, district, the wrong this is two, 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 four, no, no, no three, 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 and this Wrong values, wrong values. So result is done, no. Wrong value, temp. Temp, we bind temp, and I forgot to bind temp as well. So I guess we bind it here, right? So I bind it before or after, that's the question. I think it's after. So let's see. No. Two, four, 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 three, two. Two four four three two four two four six two two four. Okay, so it's correct. It's just that it doesn't have the first. Um, we have the last now, so meaning that the first one is in something of a trouble. And yes, of course, it's in trouble because the next we call the next here, and then we instantly get this value meaning meaning what would I do to fix this so we have the first value um, I guess what happens if I move this up and I guess if we hit here right we have to continue read value of undefined again continue also we don't need a continue here pretty sure so uh, next next we set the result and then instantly we re rewrite this result which we should probably not do it should probably happen down here or something six six two six and it end on six is that correct i don't think that's correct is it So we missed the last one. Three, six, three, six. We're missing the last one. Uh, we have the first, and that happens because this is not being run, right? I think yes, because this one has to come after. Oh, 
Okay, so we have the pattern here, right? This is the pattern. The drawing of the pattern, though, is not um, what we want it to be. Away, hey, hey. So, um, I'll just hold this for now, it's fine for me. And uh, how the code will look. Um, we have the data, and Why is the graph not being drawn correctly then? That's the question. So we have the graph. We have the graph and the first value is six. There is a value higher here, which should not be possible. The question is why is that happening? Why is that happening? So line two, what if I do line two and then we draw the number? So we say something like uh, ctx the begin it's just a lot of begin paths here but and then we say these values so y x AI. So here we have numbers. Okay. Okay, so this seems to be. It's because it's reversed right now. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So it's correct. It's just that I have flipped it the wrong way, meaning that my numbers. They run the wrong way, meaning that zero should be down here and not the other way around so i guess the question is why this happened then and why i made it this way so um start from zero and then we calculate this value times What if I just do 50 here or something, 20? Oh, wait a minute, there's a 5. I don't think you 5s were allowed, were they? Maybe I have fucked this up. Yeah, there's zero fives. I messed it up then. Um, 50 needs to hold 4 51 also needs to hold 4 52 is correct okay so something is up between 50 and 51 um, and that could be different reasons I guess Maybe I'm maybe I messed something up in the byte pattern or something. So it happens multiple places. Where do we have this? So we have it at 51 and here. So 50 to 51 and 52 to 53. So let's see. Um, and we use this meaning that 51. 53 aha yes 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 I think that's it 
Maybe that was easy fix. So 51, 4, 6. Seems to be fixed now, right? 52, 1, 53, 6. And 50, 51, 4, and 5. And it's 4, 4 now. 4, 4, 1, 6, 2, yes. Okay, so the data should be correct now, I think. I guess we can print out and then look at the numbers to be 100% sure. Um, so now is the question. We start, okay, yes, I think I know why the graph is uh, not correct here. It's because the starting x is in the top, but what we really want is we want to have the starting or the starting y, right? We want to have it in the bottom. So, I guess what I would need to do is that I would actually have to have the height and then I would have to minus this number right so I was would minus this with the height and that should actually give me what I want yes yes so now six is on the top and we have one down here um, that looks a bit better and maybe I should just uh, push this a little bit so let's do 50 here uh, that didn't work um, why didn't that work? Start, move to, line two. And line two is based on this. Um, yes, yeah, so here you probably need to add something because this is. Uh, so we do like plus 50 or something. Um, but then the numbers doesn't doesn't fit, I guess. Yeah, I guess I need to make it fit then somehow. Also, it doesn't seem like the end is really doing that well for it. Last number is free. We get, we kind of get it, but we don't get the last number um, written. So I guess maybe it's this one, right? X values, or it should really be this one, right? So I times X V. Yes. Um, or because I divide by. Plus 50 down here, right? Um, yeah, now it's already getting a bit. I actually do this computation multiple. We could put it into one, right? But we still don't get the last number. Oh, it's because it started from zero. I thought I'd fix this by this. Hmm. Why is this not working? Interesting. Oh, yes, of course, it's up here, so I plus one to spin. Okay, it's better. I'm also not sure if I should draw this first line, but and these numbers, they do not fit at all. So let's see, maybe we can make them fit. Um, so what do we have? How do we calculate it? Height C. So I guess it's this right. Yes. It should be this. And then the A is just I. 
Or their ray value. Now we don't, don't have this, so... And they are reversed, so let's fix this. Um, let's see. Start from six minus zero, one, two, three, four, five. I need to go to seven. All right. Maybe it's also better to have lines or something. I guess the question is then what is next really? I'm not sure. I guess we could make other graphs, right? Like this one. Or look at the data in different ways. Maybe. I could also, maybe should actually do that thing, I've been thinking about something for some time and the thing that I want to do is that I want to make some analysis based on the text in here, right? Um, so I could also make that program now. I'm not sure how much I want to go, I probably need to read a bit on in this one book uh, to figure out what more, but you know, this is the basic graph, right, uh, of the time wave or not of the time wave, but some pattern. This is um, this is the pattern of difference um, in the lines. If you take the like, what would you call it, the hexagram and the 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 previous one, like, I think that's. I'm not sure. But maybe you should do this because I think it would be very good to, um, 
for it, like as an exercise, right? To because I have all these text files, and I kind of want to do something very simple first, like counting the words, uh, counting the characters. Um, And what more can we do? I'm not sure how much more I can do. Because then, if I have the word count and I have the character counts, and I have my own uh, graph like here, right? I can I can add more data, so I can uh, display here uh, what this amount of uh, hexagram readings um, equal to in pages or something. Or how many words it's compared to, or something. Just you know, random data that doesn't doesn't it doesn't matter so much, right? But it's sometimes it's fun to look at uh, data. At least that's my um, at least that's my <laughs> my idea about it, right? I like looking at data sometimes. Or it's not so much what does this mean, right? It's more that there is some data display here and then I could have multiple or more to it if I had more data about this um, I've also not written Python in, in some time, so maybe, maybe I should. Maybe I should. I could really do so many things just with this data, or yeah, that's one of the things I find interesting, right? Is that if you have some kind of data set it doesn't matter what kind of data set it is um, you can extract <laughs> different information um, from that specific data set uh, by looking at it in different ways so just this data i have here i can look at it in, in many ways right in a lot of ways i could actually look at this data um, So many ways, it's crazy almost. But I guess we we write some Python or something. After. Let's uh, let's do that. I guess. <laughs> if I can even remember how I do these things. open folder, and I think uh, let me see. Maybe I should watch out here. I never know when I step into a minefield or something. Oh, wait a minute, I think, think I've placed something in here, right? Yes, Python, and we have these. You should probably watch out with this one. It might have a token in it or Search something. Um, let's see. This is the only thing I don't like about Python, right?
I guess um, I'll make a new folder or something. Teaching data format thing or something. And let's do. I'm not sure if yeah, I can probably not do this. Right. Um, oh. Ay ay ay. <laughs> Whatever. Fuck it. Fuck it. Um, so let's see. We go here. CD and we say uh, what is it pi main dot pi or something. Okay, we can print yes. So let's go. Um, and what we need to do here is that we need to get all the text right. So uh, first of all, I need to get the text from all these folders. So let me actually do this and yes, whatever. Fuck it. Um, all these bugs, right? Uh, so let's see. Uh, research, subject, and itching, text. Yes. Currently editing. Okay. And we have the text here, which is good. Um, let's see. I might also store it to some others. So let me check here quickly. Um, Text index. Okay, so we don't have the text elsewhere. Uh, that's good. So we can get this path. Um, okay, and we need to. So. Let's see, Python read folder. Um, so OS path walk deer, maybe that's it. Um, if you want just files, you could either filter this down using OS path, or you could use OS walk, which will yield two lists for each dictionary. It visits. So F four break. Why is this easy? Island. Doesn't work. File extent. What is this? What is this? Maybe we should just get it from. I mean, I did this right somewhere. Uh, certainly did it here. I think. Yeah, I wrote something else. Actually, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where's the program? Let me look here. Oh yes. yes, I have these files, that's maybe why. And this is totally different files actually. 
Maybe we should add these then. Okay, so here we I do it, I'm pretty sure. Um, what do I do? Open path V. First, last, close. Uh, deer, so maybe I use this somewhere. Deer first. Deer list. Recur object. Where is this function? Goes in the dictionary, new dictionary. This is also a recursive function or what? I never know. <laughs> I never know what I'm writing. Right, so OS, maybe this is the OS. OS, list deer, object deer list, deer name, split 30, deer, it's a variable, deer name, folder look, uh, it takes a path and an object. So OS, list deer based on a path. I guess maybe I should just do this OS actually and figure out. It probably have something like folder, so uh, Python OS get files from folder. Instead of all that fancy stuff. You can use glob or simply list here. Yeah, list here, I think. It I think it's what I want, right. I don't know what this glob is, that's the thing. No clue. Traverse, I forgot what traverse means. Does it mean that it goes all the way down or what? Generate file names in a dictionary tree by walking the tree either top down or bottom up. Yes, so this is not what I need because I don't need to walk into the tree. I actually only need this. So let me skip the walk. The walk is actually what I did here myself, I think, um, in this program. Um, so so file what's it doing okay so file os dear list my dear so I guess this is where I take the path right um a variable and file then ends with txt print os path join my dear file actually I just want to print file I don't want to join fuck that I don't know what it what it does I guess it joins oh yeah it gives you the whole path maybe I should do this it's fine um, let's see. Oh, yay, we get the texts. It's funny way that it's choosing to sort this, actually. I think. And maybe you should move this out here or something. 
So we can get this. Right, that's all the paths or all the files. So maybe I should do something like uh, um, file path and we could do an array and we could uh, file path dot push or what append I guess it is here um, and we append the file path so we have a list of all the, the files we want to get so we say uh, p in file path and fp you could also do it up here right there is no reason really to add this to an array but maybe i need it i'm not sure um, so the file path what we want to do here is we want to read from the from a file so python read from file basically just be be this or this or this yes I guess it's this right so FP is the file path which goes here is the read attribute so F and what we want to do then is C let's see what F actually holds here um, it has a next, I'm not sure if we can use this, or a new line, or a read line. So, um, oh, there is something here, open, f, read line. Maybe this just reads one line, right? Yes, this reads what appears to be one line. Meaning that you can probably do something like while, f, um, read line. I'm not sure, but it might be possible, right? Meaning that we would have to... Uh, no. I, I guess maybe I should just do this. X in F, that's probably what I like most as well. Or X, or L in F, print L. Let's see. Oh, yay, we print. Okay. Okay. It should probably be functions, but whatever. Let's be script kitties. <laughs> uh, script kitties. Why <laughs> something? Okay, so we have the lines, meaning that what we want to do now, we want to collect data. So we have a line, and a line can be separated, or we can split a line, meaning that I can probably do split on white space. So this would be one count, and maybe I should do something. Let's start making functions here, actually. And I should maybe also make a, a data object so, um, let's see, let's see. Um, and I think the music stopped. So, uh, count words maybe, and we want to have a diff count, count, uh, characters, is that how we spell it? Ok, 
Okay, and this will take a line probably and I might pass an object as well and the same for it is or maybe I break it down into a word and then I guess I could pass it multiple ways, right? Let's get the or remove the error. Okay. Why is it complaining here? I don't like when it's complaining. Def invalid syntax. Is that not how you do Python function? Def my function. Why is this not allowed? Oh, probably because of that. Okay, yes. So, 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 so. And I see we get the N here as well. We get the N um, for the new line, right? Which is somewhat a problem because it counts as character. So we have to take that in mind. And it seems like there is something here as well. Uh, which does not really look good. Which does not really look good. He does not lose himself, but if a man seeks association with others as if he were an... I wonder what that was. Looks odd. Like this. I guess this is hexagram 8. Maybe I can check it out. not this file okay interesting hmm I'm not sure if this is multi-threaded might be or what run over these and then make let's actually do an object here so we do an object uh, python object let's see i can re never remember this off the top of my head to be honest so x5 equals our class my class equals 5 put this here or probably put it here now that it's reading linearly right so x and uh, we call a word count and we want the uh, letter count equals zero and this is equal to zero and what more do we want the word count the letter count um, I guess we could check for the uh, Occurrences, is that it the word, or how many time, how many times a word uh, occur, <laughs> occur, I, I cannot say it. Isn't this it? To, to, to occur. Occur? To occur. To occur. Okay. Um, 
um, so we have word count, letter count, and on a class, and let's call this uh, data object, or I'll call it this. And it doesn't have a constructor because we don't need the constructor, but we need to create this object for each um, file we read. So here, um, and let's do something like uh, data object array, and then we do uh, this. We bind new. Is that how you do it? How do you do <laughs> new object uh, Python? Um, student. Okay, so you just call it no new. And so we have the object, right? We have the object here. Um, and I guess we don't find it or we don't do that for now. But we do this here. And we say append, append data object and data object we will call do or something. That's fine with me. So we append do. And so when we're done with this, let's do for for uh, Moser89, thank you, uh, for uh, the in data array uh, print the, this will probably give us an object reference, I'm not sure at the moment, but uh, let's see. So we have this object, which is a data, data object, and it holds word count, and it holds word letter count. So um, here we do a splitting. So I guess the first thing we want to do here is that we want to do something like word count plus equal. And then we will call this function. And we make sure that this word count return some value um, or count words, right? So count words and we count words on um, the line which is L and we say L dot split um, split on white spaces and this will not work 100% correct I think but it will give us somewhat a correct answer and I might be able so let me see what should I do here um, this is also where maybe maybe I do want to count the words like a word occurrence uh, count or something and this would probably have to be a dictionary where I count up for each occurrence of the word and then you know the fun part is that if we have word occurrence we have word count then we can uh, we can see how many um, we can see like the total uh, or how frequent a word uh, does occur in the text, so we can maybe see percentage of uh, you know word uh, appearance in um, in the text. So maybe we can make like a uh, a percent uh, a percentage uh, analysis or something and show uh, uh, the percentage for each uh, words in the text or the percentage for how frequently the word uh, occur or occur in the text. <laughs> okay, um, so and counting the words will probably, or uh, making a dictionary count will probably be the, like counting how many times the word occur will probably be the most difficult. Um, and I'm not sure what we can do, so let me print this. And let's see what happens when we run it. So nothing happens? Nothing or no? Okay, so we have a mistake here. Word counts is not defined. Word counts is probably because um, it's trying to run this before, so let me do def run. Um, and we indent all this. Then we say run here or something. 
Okay, so that was not it. Never mind. Or is another so plus equal int and list. And I jumped away or something here. So here Okay. So there was a mistake. Plus, because this returns, yes, this returns a list right now. And what we need, so let's forget about this return right now and figure out. Um, so we have, a, uh, I guess, counting the array is just len, right? I never can remember these keywords, but I think this is, this might be it, right? Let's see what it prints. Append object do cannot happen. Yeah, it's because of yeah, that's fine. So actually I need to do this. Um, and I cannot do that because it's not a type, so let's also do this. Return. Okay, so we get something here, which is good. And let me actually before I mess something up, let me take a copy here uh, of these files and then Something like this. Okay, so we can do count. So here, what I would want to do is that I would probably want to print not the length, or I would print the length and I would print the, the string as well, just to make sure. And then we can check. Um, and I don't know if I should do, do this over here. Um, okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it's it's not zero based or what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11. Okay, so it's definitely not zero based. Um, and I guess in my case right now, it's, it's actually fine for it not to be zero based. Uh, so I get the exact number, uh, which I do need for it, what I need to do, right? And um, so we count the words, yes, uh, interesting. So what we can do now is that we print the data object. So let's see what happens if we do word count and we print that. And I guess the data object also, we would need to have something like um, the Qing number here. So we know uh, which number it's assigned to. And this should probably, so I need a constructor, right? Or I think I need a constructor for this, or is it? Yes, I do. I do, and I do also need. So yeah, I'll ref refactor this, but I'm not sure how. Uh, but I need an Ching number here, so I know which um, Ching the data is for, right? But. Let's try to see what happens if we print this. Um, okay, so we get something here. Um, so this should be the word uh, count for each file, right? So we get the word count for each file and let's get the character count as well. So we do do dot character or letter count. Maybe I should have called it character plus equal do or count characters. So this is where, you know, it's, it's a bit conflicting almost because I call it character here and, and letter there elsewhere. So, um, now the question is how do I decide to count the characters? Because what do I define as a character, right? 
I can choose to define a white space as a character. I can choose to remove white spaces as character. So um, that's something I guess we have to think about. Um, do we want to um, care about uh, white space or do we or should we just store both? Should we just keep uh, um, white space and uh, without white spaces so we have both the numbers and maybe that will even be useful or something uh, who knows right um, so we split on nothing I think right that will give us an array and for that we can do return um, so then this and let's try to just print this to see and we remove this and so we run again and split empty separator what does that mean an empty separator so let's see here um, python split um, per character it's not spelled correct, but okay. So you can do it like this: list, and then the string just. So list, list l, but yes, probably. we write characters <laughs> okay so and this also contains white spaces <laughs> so the question is should we do a trim here I don't know I don't know uh, let's return so let's see Let we stop printing or should I print this I think one thing would be interesting. Um, because I kind of want statistics for each uh, text, right? Um, and if I want statistics for each uh, text, then I suppose I need... Um, I need to... to know I need to know only the characters, right? I, I think I would only want, or not in every case, maybe, but I guess an important factor uh, would appear to me as knowing the difference between uh, the word count uh, and the characters because then I could um, then I could see for each specific text uh, the average uh, word length so I could have a number which describes how um, long is the average word for each text maybe and then I could compare you know because I have 64 texts and I have numbers and uh, so we can I guess we can make some 
I think fun about it. And also it will be stuff like this. Um, because all 64 would give, or all 64 would co contain the same amount of uh, data display, meaning that it would give me, uh, you know, 64 web pages with different data. You know, they would look similar, but they would have uh, different information about uh, each text. So I could have um, like a data page for each uh, each text, right? Uh, which would then uh, give me more points on the internet or something. <laughs> And yes, so okay, so we got that down for now. It's not. Um, I guess maybe I should write a comment. Um, it does not work. Not work. Hundred percent, as supposed to or something. Because the word counts. Um, I do not get clear words. And I do not get clear characters only, I get all, every character. And every character in this case, um, a character in this case is also a white space. It's also a comma and it's also uh, a dot or other characters which may appear. Um, and um, I'm not sure how I will fix that for now, but I guess it's something I'll just keep in mind. And then we will um, we will look at the path here because the path contains uh, which number the text is. Right, so we get the paths here. We loop over or the, the uh, what would you call it? Uh, the container path which contains the files and we get all the files here which end with txt but that's all of them um, and we append it to this file path so maybe here this is what i'm doing wrong because i get the path here and i get the file and the file so let me actually console log here and we or it's not javascript <laughs> uh, let's print um, and let's also let me let me actually just remove this for now. Okay, so we get the txt. That's very good. That's what we need um, for the number, right? So uh, I guess I can just take this and then we say data object. So I need to make a constructor out of the object. So uh, Python uh, object constructor. I cannot spell, but um. <laughs> okay. So okay, class class def f self. Uh, okay, so in it, I guess this is what we need, right? In it, yes, seems like it. Um, doot. and remove this. Then we take all this, dump it here. Then I probably need to do self again, right? Um, or something like that. And the ching number is now coming from here. So, um, number. This has to go as well, and this comes from number, and then we create this object here, and we append it to mm. okay. So this might also, yes, let's also say self dot file actually. So this will also contain the file, will also contain the file. Uh, which it's supposed to read um, and I, I'm not sure if this is conflicting um, so in itself data object we create the data object it takes a number and the number is gonna be the path which is not really a number but um, it's a string but it 
it contains what I need to look at as the number. Um, and also the file. So the file is just file. Uh, right, file path. We append here. And do we run? So this is a file path. So it's actually the file path and not the file. So file path. Um, which we can then do OS the join file path. And the file path is now gonna be. We'll push this object append or append them. Append them to this array and remove this and then we comment this away and file path so file path is now suddenly object list data data object gives us an object which i'll call o and we do not need to initialize or create anything here so fp which was before the file path is now file.path or o.file.path which gives us a file and for that file, we do then read uh, the file and we do a word count on the O object. And after that, we don't need to append anything anymore. So file path append also have to go. And so file, yes, seems to work. And what we can do is that we can loop over the list and we can print out uh, the data within the object. So why is this not? Or why is this complaining? This is complaining. It seems to run. So it seems to run. I guess the error was nothing. Um, so um, let's print some more here actually. So uh, itching number. And yes. So I guess we can also write that word occurrence count. Let me see here again. Okay, so we get the text. We get for which text uh, the data is for, and we get the data. Um, not taking in considerations, there might be, uh, or the data might not be formatted in the correct way yet. But let's. See if we can write that word count function or word occurrence functions. Uh, so uh, word occurrence function word occurrence function. I'll just call it this. And this one. Okay. So what this will take is that I'll probably this will probably have to be a dictionary, right? So word occurrence count we could make a dictionary and then I'm not exactly sure how you do dictionaries right now in, in Python. It's, I don't always code Python. It's just for scripting stuff like this, right? Some data formatting. Um, so let's see. So this word occurrence function, we might be able to call here and so in this case I think we would have to pass the O instead and we would have to pass the, the letter and would not and we would do the binding inside this function maybe uh, without returning I guess I could also return right but so L definitely have to be split on spaces which would give us the word and then what we would do is that we would say oh that word uh, occurrence count would have to so so this would have to be a variable right and what happens okay word occurrence count so split this goes to a variable meaning that for x or v in this then we get for then we get each word and we say oh that word count which is a dictionary and so let's look at dictionaries for python python dictionary python dictionary um how do they work 
properly so we access them using this and we get it using this so okay good meaning that i can say v and i should be able to assign a number here so um then the question is how does it work oh. How does it work if the item is not within the dictionary? Um, let's see, example, check if keys exist. If model is in diction, yes. Okay, so I guess this is what I need to do. I need to say if, if V in this, then o dot v plus equal one else um how do you even do else here uh, else um else we have to add it right so meaning that this dictionary probably have to add Something like this. So this equals zero. Maybe. And then let's try to print it actually. See what it what value it gives if it even gives a value. Probably remove all that printing. Oh, look, we have something here. Looks like it works. Um, himself three times zero. Okay, so first time it's most certainly not zero. It's actually one. Um, look, uh, we have count. One problem I see right now is first of all, uh, this appears to can happen. So, and also this. So there's there's quite some problems here. I need to remove. I need to remove the line, and we need to figure out what this is as well because there's some like corrupted data almost here. Um, so removing the line and then we probably just have to like do do a string to lower case or something right that would fix some of these problems Okay, so I guess one thing we also need to do now is that we need to iterate over the list. So iterate over dictionary, dictionary uh, Python. Okay, so for key value in for Python 3, I think I'm in Python 3 right now. So let's see, def, um, dictionary, uh, compare, word, count, or something. And this takes key, and we send it, or it takes this, and like that. We send the data object, so, set the data object, and, so, items which is also wrong so here maybe items key d okay so d is d is the dictionary so d dot items meaning that i have to do dot items here and i get the value and i get the key um 
So, what I want here is just a simple sum. So sum, or um, can you not call sum? Oh, that's a function. So x uh, c sum equals zero, and we say sum c sum plus equal value uh, print c sum. Okay. Oh, and the numbers match up. That's very good, right? So twelve thousand and eight. So um, Um, so I guess the problem now is formatting, formatting and removing what we don't need. Removing what is not needed. Um, and that's somewhat more difficult. Um, Because also, what do I want to remove? Do I want to remove every comma, every uh, punctuation, and every new line? That's probably what I need, or what I want to remove, right? I guess I don't care about how many new lines there is. Or I could, I guess I could care about the new lines. That's also something you can do data on, if, it, if that's what I want, right? Uh, now that maybe uh, we're doing a comparison on, on everything or something um, so Probably this is probably the most difficult task, and probably where I need to go get some regular expression or something to, to solve this problem for me. Um, because there might be other characters, so I guess what I would want to do is actually only allow characters, right? So as long as I just allow characters, it's it's fine. Or it should be fine. Um, or letters, I guess, allowing letters only. Something. Like some matched letters only. Maybe that's what we need. Use a character set. A is a set. But then it seems like it also had numbers, right? Which we might want or no. I guess I could add this, right? Let's try to see what happens if we use this regular expression somewhere. So um, Python's format string on reg x. You see string format seems to be a thing. How to regular expression 3.7. Uh, 
is all fine. Okay, compile. Maybe that's it, right? Ignore case. Okay. So recompile. Okay. Before it re. And recompile. Okay, so here is what I don't understand. So if, if I sign P to the compile of re, where is the string? Like, P in this case, I suppose, is the string, right? Or no? Does this just give a search pattern? Maybe this just gives a search pattern. Um, so P match tempo M. None. So I guess maybe this match or something. What does that do? If you you now you can try matching various strings against the RE. An empty string should shouldn't match at all, since plus means one or more repetitions. Okay. So let's try. Try something. Um, count words. Match. Re compile. And we use that, and we get that regular expression. Where was it? Um, or is it this one? No, no, no. So do we split before or after? I guess we compile first, match L, and then we, so let's see what this returns, print, print, and let's remove all these printing. Match A, match I, match B, match C. Interesting, what is going on here? It's definitely not what I wanted. Do I need to split it first? So I guess this is not how you do it. This is what I do right. I'm 
maybe not. Span match T. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> you know, maybe I need to do that. Maybe I cannot format it this way because that's not good enough, right? This only returns some kind of true Boolean value, meaning that I will probably need to format the string myself. Oh, I think. I'm not sure. I might need to format the string and then use this compile on each character and then if there is a character that does not fit, fit uh, this and um, what would you say if there is a character that does not fit um, into like this confinement of from A to C and capital A to C a uh, capital C um, then I could remove it, I guess. I'm not sure if I want to do that right now. Maybe I should go on break. Or take a break. Right. Yeah, I think I'll take a break, so have a good day. <laughs> 